morning boys and girls uh, today we come up with a session on muscle spindle obviously this uh, muscle spindle ka session is equally important as we have al al uh, always covered important topics because you know this is uh, important not only for our first professionals right this is not only important for the first professionals but also important set of mcqs they come up from this topic in whatever exam you are preparing it could be your neat pg it could be your fmg or even your inict right so let's get started uh, you know when you speak of the muscle spindle and just to introduce myself i am your faculty and more so your mentor dr reena kaur uh when you speak about uh, regulation of muscle tone and muscle length right when you speak about the regulation of the muscle tone and muscle length two things come into our mind the first is a monosynaptic stretch reflex theek okay? hai the monosynaptic stretch reflex this monosynaptic stretch, uh, stretch reflex is a uh, reflex with uh, integrating center spinal cord right integrating center spinal cord and the other reflex which is important are the long loop stretch reflexes the long loop stretch reflex this long loop stretch reflex has got integrating center cortex right so the muscle length the muscle tone are maintained with the help of the monosynaptic reflex that is the stretch reflex whose receptor is muscle spindle okay whose receptor is muscle spindle and you have got the long loop stretch reflex whose center is the cortex so today we are going to study basically the muscle spindle we'll just start with a flash card in front of you see Uh, different boxes are being given to us 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and you have to tell me what are these boxes signifying that means what are they composed of and what are their functions and what we will do is we will just put an applied question like regarding the gb syndrome right where the pa pa patient is suffering from weakness and loss of deep tendon reflexes now before i proceed forward okay or before i uh, start teaching you in detail let me clarify one thing to you which is something very very confusing to us this is the structure of the skeletal muscle this is the extra fusel muscle fiber right the extra fusel muscle fiber which is basically consisting of the contractile components that is actin and myosin right this extra fusel muscle fiber is extra fusel muscle fiber is good morning abhishek this extra fusel muscle fiber is supplied by alpha motor neurons and where are these alpha motor neurons these alpha motor neurons are present in the ventral or the anterior horn cells of spinal cord now to separate this extra fusel muscle fiber from the muscle spindle this is the muscle spindle which is present inside we have nomenclatured this intrafusal muscle fiber right this intrafusal muscle fiber to differentiate it from the extrafusal muscle fiber so this intrafusal muscle fiber is what is our muscle spindle and the efferent of this is gamma motor neurons right the efferent of this is the gamma motor neurons now where are these gamma motor neuron cell bodies present the gamma motor neuron cell bodies are also present in the ventral horn of spinal cord right so if you take a spinal cord right if you take a spinal cord and you must remember that this is the alpha motor neuron and neighboring to it is the gamma motor neuron this is a very very important anatomical uh, relationship between the alpha and the gamma motor neurons which is also called as the alpha gamma coactivation which we will look into a couple of minutes later right so what is the reason of this alpha gamma coactivation what is the reason of this alpha gamma coactivation is the anatomical closeness of both of these alpha motor neurons right so one two we will understand all of them what are they there is not, nothing to be confused of 
so you see that this is the extrafusion muscle fiber or the regular contractile units of the muscle right the extrafusion muscle fiber or the regular contractile units of the muscle inside this is arrangement of the intrafusion muscle fiber which we are calling as the muscle spindle now can you see that this intrafusal muscle fiber is parallel to the extrafusal muscle fiber right the intrafusal muscle fiber is parallel to the extrafusal muscle fiber apart from this you can see that it has got a bag like structure which we will study in detail regarding the components of the or the constituents of the muscle spindle another thing to be noticed right another thing to be noticed is that that this is the central or the equatorial region of the intrafusal muscle fiber which is called as the non contractile central portion of the intrafusal muscle fiber this is the peripheral portion and boys and girls look it very carefully that the peripheral portion of the intrafusal muscle fiber is merged with the extrafusal muscle fiber right so because the peripheral portion of the intrafusal muscle fiber is merged with that of the extrafusal muscle fiber whenever there is stretching of the extrafusal muscle fiber right whenever we are going to stretch this extrafusal muscle fiber there is going to be by default the stretching of the peripheral portion of the extrafusal muscle fiber and there is going to be the stretching of this peripheral portion of this intrafusal muscle fiber so because because this extrafusal and intrafusal they are merged towards their periphery whenever the extrafusal muscle fiber will stretch the stretching of the extrafusal muscle fiber will result in the stretching of the intrafusal muscle fiber because the peripheral ends are attached right and this stretching is going to then stimulate the central portion which is actually behaving as a stretch sensitive receptor okay which is actually behaving as a stretch sensitive receptor purely a stretch sensitive receptor where there is no contractile component that is no actin and no myosin right so is this clear what have we seen up till now extrafusal muscle fiber intrafusal muscle fiber intrafusal muscle fiber has got a central or the equatorial portion which is non contractile purely behaving as a stretch sensitive receptor and the peripheral portion is merged with uh, that of the extrafusal muscle fiber right now what are the various see this is also a beautiful diagram you can see how beautifully you know this intrafusal muscle fiber is been structured where centrally there is a bulge and can you see these bags these bags are what are the two types of fibers which we get in the muscle spindle so the muscle spindle is basically made up of two sets of fibers right the nuclear bag fibers the nuclear bag fibers and the nuclear chain fibers right so before we go into the detail of nuclear bag and nuclear chain fibers some something very very important as far as uh, mcqs are concerned on muscle spindle so muscle spindle comes into a category of a mechano receptor right because it is getting stimulated by stretch first thing it falls into a category of a proprio receptor because it gives you information about the joints about the muscle length and positions right it is present parallel to the intrafusal muscle fiber right it is present parallel to the intrafusal muscle fiber third and fourth is that it responds to what it responds to stretch another way it responds to length which length does it detect basically it detects both length that is the static length as well as the dynamic length however when it, there is a dynamic length change then you actually refer to what is the stretch reflex right but remember that uh, these are the important important points to be considered mechano receptor proprio receptor present parallel to the extrafusal muscle fiber responds to muscle length now we'll just you know just have a this is the muscle spindle okay this is the location of the muscle spindle and over the tendons you have got the golgi tendon organ right over this tendon this is the golgi tendon organ and in the muscles you have got the muscle spindle to differentiate as i told you that it is parallel right this is present in series 
this is going to detect the muscle length this is going to detect the muscle tension right the afferents of the muscle spindle are 1a and type 2 whereas the afferents of the gto are 1b it is resulting in a monosynaptic stretch reflex right monosynaptic stretch reflex whereas the gto reflex is a bisynaptic reflex it is a bisynaptic reflex because it is using an in, uh, interneuron it is also called as the inverse stretch reflex also called as the inverse stretch reflex so this is something important differentiating point between the two proprioceptors which are present in the muscle now let's look into the detail of this muscle spindle right you should you should remember that the number of the muscle spindles right the number of the muscle spindle also varies with the precision of the skill movement a muscle has to perform that means it is proportionate to the degree of it is proportionate to the degree of precision of the muscle right precision of the muscle what do you mean by that like in a muscle like gastric nimus muscle okay in the gastric nimus muscle who is not performing any uh, skillful or very uh, you know very uh, uh, precision of the muscle is not there not very precise movements are there not very fine skilled movements are there here there is going to be just 5 to 10 muscle spindles per gram there is going to be 5 to 10 muscle spindles per gram but if you compare this with introsia right muscle which is involved in the fine skilled movements here there can be up to 100 muscle spindles per gram 100 muscle spindles per gram of muscle whereas in the gastric nimbus 5 to 10 muscle spindles per gram of muscle this is something very very important to be remembered right now the afferents are 1a and type Two, right the afferents are 1a and type 2 before that remember that the muscle spindle structurally has got two types of fibers nuclear bag fibers and nuclear chain fibers so this is the nuclear bag fiber because the arrangement is like a bag centrally paced nuclei whereas nuclear chain fibers where it is present in the form of a chain now this nuclear bag fibers have got two portions okay this nuclear bag fibers have got two portions one is a dynamic portion and the other is a static portion right a dynamic portion and a static portion dynamic means it is going to respond to change in the muscle length right change in the muscle length whereas static means it is going to bring about information about the constant length right even the resting length which is also important for the proprioceptive and regulation of the muscle tone now this uh, bad fibers okay now what is the difference is that there are about two to three bad fibers there are about two to three bad fibers per muscle spindle whereas if you consider the nuclear chain there are about five nuclear chain fibers per spindle and the length of the muscle spindle is about 3 to 10 mm right the length of the muscle spindle is to uh, 3 to 10 mm so again if uh, there's no confusion nuclear bag fibers nuclear chain fibers nuclear bag fibers are 2 to uh, nuclear bag fibers are static and dynamic nuclear chain fibers do not have such static and dynamic structure the innervations are 1a and type 2 now 1a right now please remember and listen very carefully 1a which is also called as the annulospiral ending right 1a which is also called as the annulospiral ending supplies the central or the equatorial region of both the nuclear bag fibers and the nuclear chain fibers right 1a supplies the equatorial or the central region of both the nuclear bag fibers and the nuclear chain fibers good morning murli good morning Whereas the type 2 fibers, that is the static, uh, the type 2 fibers, the secondary afferents, they are going to supply the nuclear chain fibers. They are going to supply the nuclear chain fibers and only the peripheral portion of nuclear bag fibers. So again I repeat, 
1a is supplying both the nuclear back fibers and the nuclear chain fibers the equatorial or the central region whereas <clears throat> group 2 right group 2 this is 1a and group 2 primary and secondary the secondary are supplying the peripheral portions of the both the nuclear back fibers and nuclear chain fibers so the equatorial region is not supplied by group 2 and also remember that group 1 are called as the annulospiral ending because you sometimes get this in the form of an MCQ annulospiral ending whereas the secondary ones are also called as the flower spray ending now structurally because they are innervating or they are ending up in the muscle spindle in that structure therefore they are called as annulospiral and flower spray ending right coming to the efferents you have got D1, uh, so you have got gamma 1 and gamma 2. Gamma 1 is dynamic, supplying the nuclear bag fibers, right? Gamma 1 is uh, supplying the nuclear bag fibers, so it is basically the dynamic stretch reflex. Gamma 2 is supplying the static fibers, so it is giving an idea about the static length of the muscle, right? So, intrafusal muscle fibers no actin no myosin in the center and the number is going to vary depending upon their precision more precise the work is of the muscle more is going to be the number of muscle spindle the central or the equatorial region which is non contractile is purely stretch sensitive receptor which is going to change uh, which is going to detect the change in the length or the stretch the peripheral portions are merged with the extrafusal muscle fiber right <clears throat> So here also you can nicely see that uh, the afferents and the efferents, this is the primary annulospiral ending and this is ending like in the form of a flower, therefore it is called as a flower spray ending, like a flower spray ending. Now if we look into this, what we had studied, uh, the, you know, the uh, flash card, so you can see that one, this which was given is the nuclear bag fibers right box one that is the nuclear bag fibers box two you can see this peripheral portion is the nuclear chain fiber then three this is one a or the primary afferent right four is the primary receptor that means the equatorial portion which is actually behaving as a stretch sensitive receptor fifth one this is the secondary or uh, innervation which we have called as the flower spray ending and Sixth is behaving as a secondary receptor, detecting the static length, right? Detecting the static length. So, muscle spindle, and already we've discussed uh, re regarding GB syndrome, it is a polyneuropathy caused by autoimmune response to exonal membrane or to the myelin, and there is a progressive sensory motor deficit with loss of the deep tendon reflexes. Now, this is GB syndrome, just an applied part which is given, but it is not related actually to the muscle spindle. It is just an applied given with a flashcard, which I am including, right? Now, let us go into a big detail of this, right? What is this? This is a stretch reflex. You know how do you elicite a stretch reflex? When uh, you are giving a stroke on the tendon, right? When you are giving a stroke on the tendon, what you are doing basically is that you are stretching the extrafusal muscle fiber, right? You are stretching the extrafusal muscle fiber. When you are stretching the extrafusal muscle fiber, the intrafusal muscle fiber, which has got the peripheral portion, the peripheral portion I told you remains attached to the extrafusal muscle fiber. So this peripheral portion also gets stretched. As this peripheral portion gets stretched, it results in the consequent stretching of the equatorial region. Now, this equatorial region is a stretch sensitive receptor, right? This equatorial region is the stretch sensitive receptor. So, because it is a receptor, right? Because it is a receptor, what will happen? Because it is a receptor, there is going to be increase in the rate of discharge of the afferents. And now, because we had deliberately brought about a change in the length, isn't it? We have brought about a change in the length. This is not static. This is dynamic. Because we have given a stroke with the hammer, because we are eliciting the reflex, this is 
exogenous stimulation which we are bringing about and bringing about a deliberate change in the length of the muscle spindle so it is a dynamic response and therefore the afferent is purely going to be 1a this afferent via 1a will pass through the dorsal root ganglion and on the alpha motor neurons because there is no involvement of any interneuron right there is no involvement of any interneuron this is purely a monosynaptic reflex because there is no involvement of any interneuron this is purely a monosynaptic reflex this alpha motor neuron is now going to cause contraction of the muscle whose muscle spindle was stretched right now when there is contraction of the muscle spindle the uh, sorry when there is contraction of this extrafusal muscle fiber right when there is contraction of this extrafusal muscle fiber the muscle spindle will return back to its original length and the stretch reflex will be terminated right so what we are doing is we are causing stretching of the muscle extrafusal muscle fiber resulting in the stretching of the intrafusal muscle fiber the peripheral portion first followed by the central portion eliciting the increased discharge of 1a afferents and then that is going to result in the uh, uh, contraction of the muscle fiber through the extrafusal muscle fiber through the alpha motor neurons now you've commonly uh, heard you know that sometimes when the person when we are not able to elicite the jerk what does we do we ask the person to perform a genra 6 maneuver clenching the teeth and tightening the fist like this a genra 6 maneuver or also when there is anxiety or also when there is a sudden painful stimuli a sudden painful stimuli all these conditions increase the rate of gamma motor neuron discharge right all these conditions increase the rate of gamma motor neuron discharge and you can get an exaggerated reflex so when you are not able to elicite the reflex ask the patient to do the genra 6 maneuver and then give a stimulus you will see that the uh, reflex can be easily elicited right now going on into a bit detail of what is called as the spindle loading and what is called as the spindle unloading remember that the spindle unloading can be brought about only by the alpha motor neurons right only by the alpha motor neurons now what do you mean by loading of the spindle right what do you mean by loading of the spindle this loading of the spindle can be brought about in two ways first is when the extrafusal muscle fiber is stretched when the extrafusal muscle fiber is stretched like exogenously when we are tapping the tendon and eliciting the reflex when the extrafusal muscle fiber is stretched this is first but second very important which is continuously occurring endogenously is the continuous or an asynchronous rate of discharge of the gamma motor neurons right the rate of discharge of the gamma motor neurons rate of discharge of the gamma motor neurons to the muscle spindle right to the muscle spindle and especially to the central or the equatorial region now extrafusal muscle fibers when stretched there is going to be a change in the length of the muscle spindle when there is a change in the length of the muscle spindle okay when there is a change in the length of the muscle spindle it is called as the spindle loading right the spindle gets loaded whenever there is stretching of the muscle fiber so this is exogenously so every time if we want to perform the movement or if we want to maintain our tone we are not going to give a stimuli through a tendon reflex it is not so because the muscle spindle is already under the control of the gamma motor neurons and these gamma motor neurons are giving a rate of discharge a uniform rate of discharge always to the muscle spindle that means the muscle spindle the muscle spindle is always always loaded via the gamma motor neurons it is always loaded via the gamma motor neurons because it is always loaded there is always a continuous rate of discharge both by type 2 and 1a whereas type 2 is more responsible for the static and 1a is more responsible for the dynamic right so exogenously 
loading means when you are actually giving a tendon jerk and you are eliciting the reflex but as i told you that every time we are not going to elicite and uh, look into the uh, tone we perform this only when we want to differentiate between the upper and the more lo lower motor neuron lesions but endogenously this muscle spindle is always under the control of the gamma motor neurons which are the efferents to the muscle spindle so constantly the gamma motor neurons is giving a rate of discharge to the muscle spindle and causing it to be loaded and continuously there is the stretch reflex which is going on in the body so that the rate of change as well as the i mean the dynamic as well as the static length is always interpreted by the brain now what about spindle unloading it is very simple when when the extrafusal muscle fiber gets contracted right when the extrafusal muscle fiber gets contracted the length of the muscle spindle which was disturbed right the length of the muscle spindle which was disturbed by eliciting the reflex okay which was disturbed we eliciting the reflex and we change the length of the muscle spindle but then because the extrafusal muscle fiber contracted there is again going to be the uh, maintenance of the length of the muscle spindle so when the muscle spindle come back to its original length original length meant means pre stretch length when it comes back to its pre stretch length it is called as the spindle unloading right spindle unloading so spindle loading means there is a stretching of the muscle spindle spindle unloading means that the extrafusal muscle fibers have contracted and whatever whatever error was brought about in the length of the muscle spindle is now being corrected right so unloading can always be brought about by alpha motor neurons but loading can be brought about when the extrafusal muscle fiber is stretched like giving a tap eliciting the tendon reflexes or continuously the muscle spindle is loaded because of the rate of discharge continuously coming from the gamma motor neurons now something very interesting see when we suppose i'm picking up this load and there's going to be a change in the length of the muscle fibers and therefore there's going to be a change in the length of the muscle spindle right and there is going to be the contraction of the extrafusal muscle fiber and the length is going to be corrected now if every time right if every time you are correcting the length of the muscle spindle that means you are not allowing the muscle spindle to be stretched what will happen what will happen i told you that constantly the muscle spindle should remain slightly stretched so that always there is a rate of discharge by 1a and type 2 and always the stretch reflex the static one is functioning and the length tension is always detected by the cortex and by the cerebellum and there is going to be a proper muscle tone length movement so here comes the role of alpha gamma coactivation what do you mean by alpha gamma coactivation see in the ventral horn of the spinal cord right in the ventral horn of the spinal cord these alpha and the gamma motor neurons are anatomically situated very close and they are always under the influence of the descending tracts right they are under the influence of the descending tracts which are the pyramidal and the extra pyramidal tracts directly these tracts are going to end on the alpha or gamma motor neurons or mainly via the interneurons because when they end up via the interneurons there is a better precision right now if you are bringing about the correction of the length of the muscle via the alpha motor neurons so what you have done that we elicited a stretch reflex alpha motor neurons caused the contraction of the extrafusal muscle fiber if the extrafusal muscle fiber gets contracted we said that the length of the muscle spindle will come back to normal but in that poor condition there is going to be a slack of the central portion of the muscle spindle there is going to be a slack of the central portion of the muscle spindle if there is a slack of the central portion of the muscle spindle muscle tone cannot be detected 
this is the advantage that even though the alpha motor neurons have led in the slack of the muscle spindle by bringing about contraction of the extra fusel muscle fiber the gamma motor neurons which are constantly under the influence of the descending tracts are giving a continuous discharge a continuous discharge to the muscle spindle and never allowing never allowing the muscle spindle to become slack they are never allowing the muscle spindle to become slack this is called as a asynchronous discharge of the gamma motor neurons to the muscle spindle which constantly helps in the continuation of the stretch reflex or continuous discharge of the type 1a and type 2 afferents so that every time the brain is aware about the muscle length and the muscle tone this anatomical nearness of both of them and because they are continuously under the influence of the descending tracts so even if the alpha motor neurons have caused the contraction of the extra fusel muscle fiber and they have tried to bring the muscle spindle back to its pre stretch level they will try to bring the muscle spindle back to its pre stretch level the gamma motor neurons will never allow the gamma motor neurons will never allow the slack of muscle spindle they will never allow the slack of the muscle spindle because they are continuously discharging their firing on the muscle spindle and always the muscle spindle will have a continuous 1a and type 2 discharge always completing the stretch reflex and always apprising the brain of the muscle length tension which is very very important in posture and movement right so this is what is the alpha gamma coactivation now if you want to just summate the functions of the muscle spindle like right? if you just want to bring about uh, you know uh, like what is the role of the muscle spindle uh, the role of the muscle spindle is basically in maintaining the muscle tone right in maintaining the muscle tone which is very very important in maintaining the posture right maintaining the posture and posture and this becomes important for control of the voluntary movements this become uh, this become important for the control of the voluntary movements so tone posture movements they are very much related now finally before we conclude remember that these gamma motor neurons are more under the influence of the reticulospinal tract they are more under the influence of the reticulospinal tract you know that there is a pontine reticulospinal tract and there is a medullary reticulospinal tract this medullary is inhibitory that means it is going to decrease the rate of discharge of the gamma motor neurons whereas pontine is facilitatory which is going to increase the rate of gamma motor neuron discharge so because of the balance between the increasing and the decreasing inputs the gamma motor neurons are able to maintain a constant rate and influence the muscle spindle in such a way that the muscle maintains a tone what is tone it is defined as the partial sustained state of contraction see it is a partial that means whole of the muscle at a time is not contracted some of the motor units are contracting some of the motor units are relaxing because if all the motor units would be contracting together it will result in hypertonia and if all of the muscle spin the muscle un motor units are going to be relaxing it will be resulting in hypotonia so there has to be 50% contraction and 50% relaxation of the motor units so this pontine remember has got its own inherent activity right but the medullary is under the influence of the cortical suppressor area it is under the influence of the cortical suppressor area and then it is going to inhibit the gamma motor neurons now when we do a decerebrate rigidity right when we do a decerebrate rigidity by a mid collicular transection by a mid collicular transection this is the transection between the superior and the inferior colliculi what we do we cut all the higher influences we cut all the 
higher influences to the brain stem and spinal cord the only center or the only tract which remains viable right the only tract that remains viable is the pontine reticulospinal tract which is inherently facilitatory so because the pontine tract is inherently fa facilitatory and it is the only tract which is remaining active with a mid collicular transection it increases the rate of discharge of the gamma motor neurons and therefore the patient develops rigidity the patient develops rigidity so in uh, gamma motor neurons sorry in uh, decerebrate rigidity the cause of rigidity is gamma motor neuron increase activity of the gamma motor neurons because of the facilitatory effect of the pontine reticulospinal tract right so with this we come to the end of this topic so what did we learn today we learned today the structure of the muscle spindle right the number of the muscle spindle how they vary with the precision of the work it has got nuclear back fibers it has got nuclear chain fibers its afferents which are 1 a and type 2 its efferents which is a gamma right then what is the stretch reflex which is a monosynaptic reflex helping to bring a uh, helping you to detect both the static length as well as the dynamic or the change in the length then i told you what is the spindle unloading and the spindle loading the significance of alpha gamma coactivation and a note about decerebrate rigidity right so this becomes almost complete as far as the muscle spindle is concerned i hope the lecture the class was informative to you you learned out something which you were knowing the concepts were better fixed into the mind and you learned something which you were not knowing as well right so do let me know suggest me more topics which you want for the class plus subscriptions you know iconic subscription with an academy and pre pladder the special class features like interactive there are polls we conduct raise a hand you get notifications you get notes and always you can perform them anywhere we are starting our different batches from september which will be fmg neat pg and the target ones are proud learners the inict clinical examinations target next right please avail our limited offers which are available and happy learning boys and girls stay blessed and happy learning always and all of you have a 